Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Hunter, and this is your review video on the basics of waves and sound. So, um, the first thing that we need to remember is that a wave is basically um, material carrying energy, or in this case, also because light is a wave, um, it's basically a, um, a signature of energy that's traveling through space and time. Um, and that wave has certain properties that you kind of need to know. So what I've done is made basically an X and Y axis where this is your amplitude. And here is um, kind of the degrees of what the wave is. So the basic thing for the wave is that it has an amplitude, which is how high the wave is. And remember, we always consider the amplitude from zero to the maximum, not the bottom to the top. So remember in class, I basically took a pendulum and I did simple harmonic motion. So I just made it swing back and forth under a certain angle. And what we did is we ended up graphing it over a certain amount of time. And so what we said was like, this was zero, this was 90, this was 180, this was 270, and this was 360. So one thing that you got to remember is the amplitude is the height of the wave. And it's the height of the wave from zero to the maximum or zero to the minimum. Now, um, there's something called um, being in phase, which remember in phase is being 360 degrees away from a certain point. So that's a full complete cycle of motion is 360 degrees. So um, if I were to label this A, B, C, D, and E, A and E would be in phase with each other. Um, if I were to keep labeling it and put this point all the way down here, A and um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or I'd say H, and then this would be I. A and I are in phase because it's a multiple of 360. So in phase is basically multiples of 360. Anything out of phase, and they'll tell you the specific um, angle, is essentially not 360 degrees. So if they're like, what point is 90 degrees out of phase with A? And you're like, oh, well, B. And then if they said, what point is 180 degrees out of phase with B? Then that would be point D because that's 180 degrees. So you have to make sure that you recognize um, what's in phase and out of phase. So when they're talking about um, an in phase wave, it also means, so now that we have an in phase wave has essentially the same frequency. So if you had multiple waves that were in phase, it means the same frequency. And remember, since the velocity of the wave is the same in the in a single medium, they're both in the same medium. It also means they have the same wavelength. So, so now that I'm talking about wavelength, let's talk about it. Wavelength is the length of one complete cycle of motion. So we use a symbol lambda for that. It means wavelength. And remember, wavelength is one complete cycle of motion. In that same aspect, the period is the time it takes to complete one um, cycle of motion. So time it takes, uh, spelling is fun, takes for one complete cycle is the period. We measure that in second. So that's our period. So our period and the wavelength cover the same quote unquote area, right? One complete micro cycle of motion is a wavelength and the time it takes for that one complete cycle to happen is called the period. In the same way, we have the frequency, which is related to the period. Frequency is the inverse of the period. So F, which is measured in Hertz, equals one over the period. The period is measured in seconds. Now, the frequency is the number of cycles per unit of time. So what they'll say is like this thing circles 
um, this thing makes um, 10 complete cycles um, in 10 seconds. So your frequency would be the number of cycles per unit of time. So it would be 10 over 10, which is 1 or 1 hertz. Or I could say it's a, it goes 100 times in 10 seconds. Well, if it goes 100 times in 10 seconds, 100 divided by 10 is 10 hertz. So that is your frequency. So frequency is your number of cycles per unit of time. Um, your wavelength is the length of one complete wave. Your amplitude is how high the wave is. Um, remember, that's also measured in meters and periods measured in time. Um, I saw a lot of you do this on your last um, assessment because you didn't study for it or, I don't know, look at any of the terms. You actually um, put wavelength or the amplitude is like one second. Um, which is a very silly mistake. If you had prepared for it, you would have made that mistake. So please make sure that you prepare. Remember, even though these are notes, you should be applying the information. So you should be going on Castle Learning and practicing the problems. Okay, am I missing anything about the wave? There was in phase, there was, so those are the basic parts of the waves. And then you have two types of waves that you need to remember. You have waves that are transverse waves, which is the energy travels perpendicular to the material or matter or um, whatever, because light doesn't really travel through material um, or need to travel through material. So transverse, you have to remember, is energy is perpendicular to the matter when there is matter. And then longitudinal is it travels parallel, parallel, longitudinal. So energy is parallel to the matter. Now, a transverse, type of transverse wave, light. Type of longitudinal wave, sound. So let's use that to jump into sound. So um, sound is called a mechanical wave. It is longitudinal. And you need a material or you need matter to ch travel through it. And that's what mechanical means. Mechanical means you need matter. <laughs> matter matters. So um, you need matter to travel through a material. And so sound is a mechanical wave and it is longitudinal. That means like when I'm speaking, even right now, the air molecules, uh, the energy is traveling through the air molecules, moves the air molecules left and right, and pushes the air molecule in front of it so that the sound wave can travel. Now, um, oh, one thing that we got to remember about the velocity of a wave is it is constant in the same medium. And since it's constant in the same medium, We have the equation that governs the velocity of a wave. So remember that is V equals lambda times frequency. And since velocity is constant, lambda and frequency are typically inversely proportional. Why? Because if lambda goes up, frequency has to go down to balance. Now, remember for sound, frequency is pitch. So for sound, frequency is pitch. And the amplitude, which equates to the wave's energy, is loudness. So if I make my voice louder, I increase the amplitude, also increasing the energy, and that's my loudness. But changing my frequency changes my pitch. So with sound, um, a reflected sound wave is called an echo. Um, the velocity is constant, which is 331 meters per second at standard atmospheric pressure. And based, if I change my pitch, I change my wavelength. Now, there's two things, and I'll be done, that you need to remember. There is the Doppler effect, or the Doppler shift. And that is the apparent shift in frequency because the object or the source is moving. So ambulances they only actually send out two pitches two different pitches but as it's moving towards you it's a higher frequency 
when it's moving towards you. So higher F when approaching and it's a lower F when moving away. And so that's the basic that you need to know, but you also need to recognize like you have to look at numbers and if it's like, hey, the original frequency is this, this is the new frequency, you should be able to tell me if the object is moving away or moving towards you based on the new frequency. And then lastly, we have resonance. And resonance is objects of the same natural frequency share energy. So that's why opera singers can make glass break. That's why I can make those bottles hum with a tuning fork. And one of those bottles hum with the tuning fit fork because they had the same natural frequency and so it caused the molecules inside it to vibrate because they were basically taking energy from the sound wave. So objects of the same natural frequency share energy. So please make sure you go practice some problems in class 11.